Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me on another of my wonderful interviews. Now, I'm sure that you have a phone and on the phone it has an app and you can take photographs and you can take photographs of all sorts of things. But have you thought that when you're taking those photographs that the photographs themselves might be showing something different to what you ordinarily see? Perhaps the energy of the things that you have photographed. Well, who knows? Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But in the studio today, I have a guest, um, John Railton, who is hello. a invisible light energy photographer. And hello, John. Hello, Richard. Thank you for having me. Now, I should say that um, I've met John some years ago, actually, and we did some photography vale. at, at uh, Kingley Vale, which is in Sussex near mm. Chichester, uh, a lovely place. Um, and photograph some of the wonderful trees there and you were introducing me then to the energy photography that you were doing. Yes, yes, yeah, six years ago coming up in April so lots happened since then. We we're uh, moving rapidly through I, what I believe to be a shift of consciousness at the moment and um, I've been recording those energies for eight years now so it's been interesting to go to the sacred sites and, and woodland and energy is everywhere obviously but uh, at those places it's really prevalent and it's it's interesting to see how those energies are changing yeah. as, as we as we move through the shift and it is a validation you know it's a validation of what other people feel so so tell me then what you what you mean by the energy we'll go we'll strip right back to the sort of basics so yeah. people know what we're talking about because when we when you when we, you and I were filming it, as mm. you say, some years ago now, mm. um, and you were showing the energy of these ancient trees, mm. and you were revealing things that ordinarily people might not understand mm -hmm. what they were looking at. Okay, so the energy comes from the sun. It's light energy, um, which I call source energy. And um, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of things that come through. Um, I... I, I think when, when when we did that interview six years ago, I was still learning myself. I'm not an right. e I'm not an expert on on it by any stretch of the imagination. But but what I'm using is a filter to show the invisible light spectrum, and that is picking up a lot more than we would usually see around us. So how does the the, the filter that you use then? I mean, presumably it's filtering out something and revealing yeah, it, something. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's bringing in that invisible light spectrum that we wouldn't normally see. Right. And the colour. It's bringing in the colour, which is uh, which is showing just lots and lots of stuff, which you'll see in, in, you know, when you put it on the screen, you'll see the photos. And this, and this would have a spiritual connection, presumably. Well, I, I've gone on a spiritual connection with it because there's, to me, there's definite faces there. Um, I will say to people viewing this video that you may see what you think is negativity. And obviously, when I'm out and about, I'm capturing everything. I, I, I work with the light, very much with the light, intuitive light photographer. Um, so, you know, I feel that this has removed fear for me. If I've seen things that are a little bit, maybe you could, you could think, oh, that's a bit negative in there. But it is a balance. It's a balance of light and dark. And, and obviously, I'm, when I'm photographing things, I am going to pick up on both. I'm, I'm going to pick up on that duality. So you, you just said just now that you mm. see you see faces yes. in the objects that yes. you're seeing. Just can, can you tell us a bit more? I mean, are they animated faces? Are they stationary faces? Are they? Do you interpret them as b actual beings, or is it just they seem to form a shape that you know? Because a lot of people can s sort of go, oh, if you look very carefully, you yeah, can see this. yeah, it's very much about perception. Um, a lot of people with my work will look at a photo and they'll say, oh, I see this, this, this and this. And then later on, they go back to it and they see something completely different. Right. You know, so it's it, it's about a perception as well. There are photos that you will see that are, I feel, are undeniable. There's no way that you can un, you can deny it. There is a word. I can't remember what it's called. It's para something where people say that you can see things in anything, you can see faces in anything. Right. But, you know, this, for, for me, my journey, it's been, I've been guided 
to take them. And I think I said that to you when yeah. when I first you know met you six years ago. So I still believe that there is guidance there to show other people, almost like a messenger. And what what do the photos? I mean, you take the photographs, and we'll, mm. we'll see. Um, you've got a, a little slide demonstration mm. of all of this in a minute. Um, what are they actually saying? Are, did, are they talking to you? Do they reveal anything about the object that you're looking at, or is it yeah. beyond that? Um, it's like codes. It's definitely like codes. Um, what, does that, what does that mean, like it, codes? It, <laughs> They do something to people, right? right? Positive, yes, you know, yes, yes. Or, or positive, but it's almost reminding us, it's showing us that there is more around us as well. In, in simple terms, it's, it's showing us that there is more around us going on than we realise. We've got to remove fear. That's a big thing as yes. well with this. It's, you know, it, it's not, I'm not going out looking for ghosts or anything. I, I, I'm trying to connect and, and I am connecting to nature. I suppose that one of the things that I've on the journey that I've had mm. recently um, with all the different people that I've interviewed and spoken about and the books that people send me is is clearly that what we see here in the 3D world mm. is not everything. No. You know, there's the spectrum no. that we mm. see. And then you have these mm. wonderful individuals who are able to see the aura mm. uh, or the energy fields um, mm. of each other. And they talk about how it ex it's expansive and and it reaches out and we mm. we saw that during the um the pandemic in which people were separated from one another by a certain distance which was where mm. the sort of heart space and that sort of thing and pe so people are aware of that does the the filter that you use over mm. it's an ordinary camera presumably yeah i've used my phone camera for a lot of the lot of the shots yeah right and and so are you able to see that within people or is it just in animal yeah objects? I've, I've worked with somebody called tim wild who is an ascension guide and and I've, i've filmed his workshops and while he's been doing the meditations and mentoring the colors that are coming through the filter has been showing those colors Wow. As he's talking, the, the, the filter is showing the colour. And how does the filter work? Good question. I don't know a lot about the science. I am, right. I, I am actually in contact. It, it was invented by somebody called um, Harry Oldfield, who's passed away. And there is somebody else that's taken that on now. And I, I've had a chat with him this morning, actually, and I've just been talking about my work over the eight years that, with the filter. Um, so I don't really get into the science of it. Right, you're just taking I, what you see. And... Yeah, well, it's in intuitive, yes. yeah. I, I, I use my intuition, and as I say, I am guided um, to do this, I, I believe. So. Yeah, well, um, let's. we've got a presentation up here on the screen, so let me just see if now... The, normally you have this on slides it's only on a pdf yeah, so we may it, be sliding through it a little bit and it would be play, playing the power of love but obviously we've um, got to be careful with youtube yes we can't uh, play out uh, the music so here we go a simple message planet earth 7 second 2024 which is uh, the day that we are recording this so this will probably yeah. go out a couple of days later unfortunately mm. but um so this is live for us in the studio so tell us what we're going to see and talk us through your, your okay so it's a simple message um it's unconditional love basically and um you know those of you that follow the uh not the numerology the 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 astrology will know about um pluto moving into aquarius which is massive they say this is the age of aquarius uh, uh, i love that i love that that uh, song where they're dancing on plates if you've seen it no I, yeah, from dancing 19... on plates yeah from, is that from space? hair is it hair the musical no it, it, it's 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 the original video you've got to look that up that's oh, right, so there funny we go. dancing on plates okay. yeah and I, that, that, that's the year of my birth as well 1969 so and i noticed there you've got uh, soulography yeah coming up is... with some nice yeah. nice phrases <laughs> very very good i like that so, <laughs> shall we move on to the yeah, next we'll slide? Mo we'll move on we'll move on so hope smiles from the threshold of the year to come whispering it will be happier and when i did this i did one mind can you 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 did some work with one mind can yes didn't you? i did a, um, well i did a um i did a talk with them actually uh in well, I'm just trying to think. It must have been April last year, and they've mm. obviously come on a long way since those days mm. uh, as they've developed the, their uh, community-based um, 
project, I suppose mm. it is. Yeah, so that interesting. And and that was just before Christmas, so it was. But you know, we we can have a new beginning every day. Obviously, you don't need to wait for a new year. That's yes. that's, that's what that's about. And it's also about hope, which is really really obviously important right now with what we're what we're facing um yes. with with the planet with the planet shift which is in total chaos but i like to focus and i i see see that's what you're doing as well you're focusing on the positives and the solutions yeah i'm trying I, very much trying to do more of the the solutions now mm. because we you you know and i mentioned this in a video the other day um, we can sit and talk about the problem till the cows come yes. home, but that's not actually solving very much yeah. unless we, we know what the solutions are. And, and for me, it seems very important that we actually no longer just talk about the solutions as if we Put know them what in the place. Are, But yeah, actually get on with it. Let's have some action, yeah, uh, definitely. Which is very important. So, uh, absolutely. So let's move on then, and I will do my best to bring these correctly situated on the screen so yes so so yeah exploring hidden dimensions with unconditional love and gratitude uh photography that touches the heart and soul and great photography is about depth of feeling not depth of field and i've always tried to be different with my photography work um not just although i did start with sunsets and that's on that comes on this a little bit later on but I've always tried to show something different mm. that's, that, that, that's around us. And certainly with 360 photos and using the filter, that's what I've achieved. So. And it's interesting you say that about photography, because mm. I think very often people get very much, and I think this is uh, parallel with life, you get stuck in a rut of thinking, this is the only way you can do something. Mm. And you see that with art, that people say, oh, uh, now I'm not very good with art because I am a bit of a I am in a bit of a rut with art. I like mm. to see the art where there's effort and skill involved, but art can be so much more than that. Mm. Um, but I think with photography as well, because it's um, it's capturing something in yes. the way that it's photographed. It's capturing the moment, basically, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. You know, and, and that's what it's all about. It's about staying in the moment. It's about being mindful. Um, and that's really helped me on my journey to stay in the moment because I've suffered with anxiety and depression um, in the past. How Still have you do. coped with, um, the, you know, we went through, as I say, the pandemic and mm. all this sort of fear that was pushed out by the mainstream media, by the government, by uh, um, friends and neighbours, which, you, you know, just seemed to add to the, the fear. The, 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 you... the neighbourhood police, you mean? Yeah, exactly. Watching when you go out. Yeah. How did you cope with all of that? Um, I basically had a knowing that it was something completely different to what was being sold to us, right. if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, well, that's, I mean, that's intuitive, isn't it? I, I knew. I had a knowing, basically. Yeah. Um, and So you were, were you able then to just push it away, though you, even though you saw all around you everybody... I, sort of acquiescing to, to absolute nonsense. I was concerned for the people around me, if I'm honest, and, you know, um, I think that that was really, really just sold. Some, we were just sold something completely different, and I didn't buy the fear narrative. No. Well, good for you. And, you know. and, and, and you know, the majority of the audience I know watching this um, either did and moved on or didn't and, and have stayed away from it. So that's pretty But good. if you look at the what happened after that with small businesses and everything and healthcare, um, we need answers. Yes. You know, we do need answers. Well, we do, I mean, we know so much of that was uh, deliberate and planned mm. and as part of um, an agenda. But let's go back. Um, but I am recording because I need evidence of all that. have got to get out well, of that. That's good. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> that was... Uh, <laughs> That was uh, one of those uh, errors that happens when you record <laughs> as live. So apologies for that. I hope there was no fruity language in that. Um, that was from before. Uh, right, so move back on. I've got to remember which button. Okay. Here we go. This is where we were. Uh, so, yes, the aims of your photographic work. Okay, to show others the beauty of the planet, seen and unseen. I think it's important to show the scene as well, obviously, because that's where we're living and that's what we see every day. To be able to stay in the moment and connect to my surroundings, to take photos that connect to the people 
that see them on deeper levels. I mean, my photos have made people cry. I'm, I'm, you know, that's quite alarming when somebody starts crying when they're looking at something, but there you go. But then you've moved them, haven't yes. you? You've moved their yeah. emotion, which, yeah. you, you know, it means you've made a difference, whether it was intentional or not. And that, and that's what I mean about the, the light codes and, and, the, and the messages within the photos. To understand the importance of protecting nature for the future, obviously, I've been involved, and you came down, didn't you, to Pagham? Yes. With the Brent geese to to film about their conservation. Um, it's very, very important to me, that as well. To use phot photography as a tool to promote healing through mindfulness. Staying in the moment, definitely, definitely. It is a tool that you can use to stay in the moment. And to have fun and explore and be creative, basically. Yeah, as, and, we, as we were saying just yeah. now, ch change new, new techniques and that mm. sort of thing mm. um, to expand the imagination, absolutely. So that's just a bit about me with, with, with some of the things that people have said about me being a, a seer and uh, exploring the different dimensions. So, born between the South Downs and the sea, and we talked about that before, didn't we? Yeah, before we saw about that scrolling along a bit. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and, and the South Downs, what sort of, in, in East, West Sussex? West Sussex, yeah, yeah down which in is Pagan. A, a, yeah. a lovely part of the mm. world to, to be in. Um, you know, people are born in different types of different places, but the, the South Downs with that chalk and flint, yes. you know, the ability to just run freely up on there yeah. and then come down to the coast. There's, there are a few places that are like that, but sometimes you've got the sea and you've got cliffs. I mean, wherever you are, it's going to be a somewhat you, You've got special, so, so diverse. And it I think that's so the different. beauty of England mm. and Great Britain, really, that the geology is so different. We would, We mm. were talking about in other countries like America where the scenery doesn't change for mm. several hundred miles maybe whereas here within two or three miles the job the geology changes so rapidly which which then uh, necessitates the buildings and the the, the trees and, and the whole landscape just changes which is quite incredible mm. so that's me at West Kennet with my dad from oh, my late dad. Longbarrow. yes oh fantastic yeah so I, I mean I was connecting to these places at a very early age and using my imagination and I was always wondering what those early people were you know mm. life what what life was like like as you've said with your talks on the South Downs talks and walks on the South Downs yeah absolutely the and, and people used to you know um, live in these homesteads these um, farmsteads mm. and, and rear and very much we've moved so far from that these days and yet I think people are beginning to realize that there's the essence of that mm. what we had We've lost so much. We've thrown the baby out with the bathwater to an extent with yeah. our modern world. And we could do with getting back with those communities that help one another. And Yeah, and I think it's coming, isn't it? I think we're coming back to that. That's, that's like the one mind can vibe, isn't it? Really? Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah. So uh, move on our connection to nature. Yeah, so my, it's, that's about my imagination and how I was inspired by the beauty of the places. And, and that's a drone shot of Pagham Harbour there. Lovely, yeah. I did. Uh, I have made a video around that area in the old Bald Explorer days. Yes, you did. Did you do coastal walk? Um, I was kind of. Yeah, it was. Um, it was very much a border walk mm. around the border of Sussex. I didn't complete it, unfortunately. That doesn't mean to say it's not going to be completed. It just haven't done it yet. Broken away to talk about the events of recent times and where we need to go. But uh, I, I still have that yearning to get back to the landscape, heritage and nature videos mm -hmm. that I used to do because I think we, we've got to be connected to those sort of things. To, Definitely. To, to make us whole because we are, we're not separate creatures from the planet. Exactly. We're and connected I, to nature and that's the big thing. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the big thing to remember. So, I mean, I started out with taking sunsets and sunrises and you know i was really inspired by how the light would change and, that, and that's really what my photography is about love that about one the with the big sun on the left yeah that's that, that's the uh, i took that from pagham so you can see that from except uh, i've just realized they're not reeds sticking out of the ground no though. that's, that's the, the wind farm, wind farm yeah. <laughs> yeah, there oh, you no. go take that yeah. back <laughs> i hate that picture <laughs> 
Uh, no disrespect, of course. Absolutely to, fine, to, Rich. I thought it was a bit like Apocalypse Now with the helicopters on the sun. Absolutely, yeah. No, no. I'm not a great fan. I mean, some people say they like those wind farms and things. Oh, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I yeah. have to say that... Uh, and the it's more a bit of a blight, isn't it? The more you find out about them, the, the worse they get. That's the trouble. Well, the sun's nice. In the that sun place. is absolutely divine. I completely get it. Okay, so this... Um, Julia's got uh, a picture there that... Uh, my mum uh, painted before she passed away. She had dementia, and she she gave me this picture, and it it was very it was sitting in so my Julia's house. in the studio here. Very very, very forlorn looking, um, and see, I had to get I, it reframed. Hang on, if I move out, the, there we go. So this this is the picture of the tree there that you can see see, and my, as I say, my mum gave it to me, and then if we swap back to that presentation there. Um, I went and found that tree without actually knowing where it is. Oh, yes, here. Yeah. Look at that. And, you know, bearing in mind, Dartmoor's got quite a few trees. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> wow, look at that. That is incredible. There's that big stone there. Yeah. Which we see here. If I can get the mouse on yeah. the thing. There it is. The cursor. Wow. So this and you is, managed to find that. Were, were you guided to it? Guided. Intuition, exactly. This is what part of this talk is about. It's about using intuition to find that is things. incredible. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Julia. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank big, you, Julia. Big square on there. Oops. <laughs> don't trip on the uh, wires. <laughs> to sit, what people don't see in the studio is all the wires and various yeah. things. They, you know, it all looks very nice and professional, but it's very... Amateur Julia's actually got to go. Thank you very much, Julia, for your assistance Thank this you, morning. Um, yeah, so unconditional love offers guidance. Unconditional love works with intuition and trust. So I trusted that I would find that, and it's almost like a manifestation. Really, it's got it. You've got it in your head, and that's mm. what I'm learning now. We're, we're moving into a phase where. It's so your mother, sorry to interrupt, yeah. just, it just dawned up, your mother mm. is an artist. I mean, she, clearly. she was an artist. And so yeah. you've kind of mm. taken that mantle on, it's been in your genes. Yes, because she was very much into light and colour yeah. in her work, um, which is obviously what I'm doing through the photos. It's very sad because in this 3D realm, she wasn't able to witness what I was doing with the photography. It was after she'd passed, so... You know, to me, that's quite sad. But obviously, I know yes. that she's still around. Her energy is around me. And, you know, she, she still works with me and guides me. So. And there's you and the rock and the tree, as we saw in the picture. Yeah, that, that was taken by my good friend Nick Carter uh, when we went over and we found the tree again. And unconditional, yeah, it, it, it was just amazing. Yeah. Just, just amazing to be at that place. Fantastic. So unconditional love is patient and it will always find a way through lots and lots of hearts, just finding hearts on the beach everywhere, really. Heart so, in a puddle. There you go. <laughs> heart in a puddle. So is that what you're saying is that messages coming through to remind us? Yes. There are reports. Yes. Of of love basically the universal language so unconditional love is mad magic so i started to use something called an old field filter and uh, that shows the invisible light spectrum as i said before and i'd already started on a spiritual path for stride and stay in the moment to combat depression and anxiety and which i've suffered from from an early age um so yeah it's all about that mindfulness again and starting to understand a gift as well. I lost the sight on my right side after an accident on, at an early age. And I always saw this as a bad thing, really, to be honest. Well, I mean, I've lost my eye. Yes. So we share yeah. that in common. Yes. Um, only it's, mine is my left eye. Yes. No, yeah, hang on. Right. <laughs> oh, we've got 2020 vision then. Yeah, between the two <laughs> of us, we're all right. We can see the buses coming towards us. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, it is interesting when you've... Uh, lost your sight in, mm. in an eye because and it's actually quite curious because as a filmmaker mm. it's you know very often you see people lining up and they shut one eye as they're sort of mm. lining up their sight to see how it will look like in a two-dimensional world well I don't have to do that <laughs> And well, I guess in a way you don't. No, but, but I wouldn't know any different, Richard, because I can't... I, I mean, I lost my sight at age of four or right. something. So... I wasn't using cameras at the age of four, so just sorry, just explain that to me again, how that works. Well, I suppose because I was used to uh, 
normal vision, 3D mm. vision. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're lining stuff up, you're seeing stuff in a flat plane on a mm -hmm. camera. Um, and when you look at the real scene, it's, it's, it's three dimensional. So very often I would shut one eye to look either in the viewfinder, mm. but often just to see the, the, the flat plane. Uh, or the real life. I, don't, I mean, I, it's just something that I did. Wow. Now, I don't know that I was actually materialising <laughs> the loss of an eye. And if I did, that was bloody stupid. Wow. Um, because I, 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 I wouldn't... Um, I mean, it's, it, I cope with it, as indeed yes. you cope with it. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, 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 but, yeah, I, yeah, you know, if I could have the yeah. other eye back and the sight back, it would be nice. Although I would settle for the third eye. I would second. Well, second but this, 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 I did a, um, an interview with Tim Wilder at Knowlton Church and I, and I said that to him and he said that we, we compensate with that with the third eye. Well, I hope that's true. It is true. I, I, well, I believe it. I believe it to be true. Yeah. So looking at here, is this the beginning of your, the, the invisible light on this? Well, well that, that photo was taken by my friend Christian and uh, he's using a, a system that's up from the filter that I use called a NEV system, again, invented by Harry Oldfield. And if you look at that, that's showing my throat chakra. It's showing all of the energy in my body and around me. Um, what's interesting with that picture is there's a purple heart top left of top my head. Top left here? Uh, go, sorry, top right. Top right. Do, no, go, keep going. Keep going to the left there. Yeah, oh here yeah. oh yes that's it yeah so and Christian actually showed that to Harry Oldfield um, sadly he's past now Harry Oldfield and he said that he'd never seen anybody so connected to nature wow in that picture because I'm connecting to the surrounding as well that's King Lee Vale again and so I mean uh, you know some people would just say oh well, that's just the filter doing and it's just mm. a, a happy stance I mm -hmm. guess you know I'm just mm -hmm. anticipating what people of, say of, of course and everybody's on their own timeline some people get it some people won't some people will say I've used Photoshop absolutely you know that everybody and you must have heard all of this oh, stuff yeah, God, yeah over the years yeah, yeah definitely yeah, of course yeah um, so so this is about mirroring, and, and I think I showed you six years ago, didn't I, you when did. we were in Kingley Vale. Um, so I was introduced to that with somebody on Facebook, a friend on Facebook, and it just completely changed my view again. So I'd started with the filter, and the, and, and the photos were getting very popular. I was doing pictures, uh, videos of tree colours and tree auras, and that had gone pretty much worldwide. And then I started to mirror the photos. Now, on that photo that you can see there, you can see just on the left, right on the left-hand side of that picture, you can see something, can't you, at the top? Yes. Well, here. Just, to, just go up to the... That's it. That's it. You know, just round there, you can see something. So this is where I was shown the importance of mirroring a photo. Um, so if you scroll down to the next slide, that's what you get when you mirror the photo. So you're seeing what looks like... Some, a face. Uh, yeah, well, like the whole body and head of the face. Mm. Which, um, now, would you, I mean, is that just happenstance? That that's just, you know, coincidence that when you do that? Or do you think that in real life you're seeing only half of something that's there? I, it's something to do with seeing half. It's something to do with the fact that I can have the intu intuitive um, vision with the mirroring as well, maybe because of I can only see on one side, ah, yeah. I, I would say. Right. That's, that's how that's I That's very interesting. I mean, you know, the, I don't suppose you get many conversations with somebody who's equally impaired, no. or, shall we say, or, no. or uh, no. having the same issue, I guess. Mm. So that's quite interesting. So if you scroll down, I mean, to me, there's no denying that there's a face there. It's got, uh, I believe that's a Liren goddess. Um, Lirans are helping with the ascension of the planet at the moment. Third eye's completely open there. You can see the whiskers. I mean, I don't need to really... So is that sort out. of like um, a, a, a feline... Um, extraterrestrial. Yeah. Extraterrestrial, but cat-like. You said yes. whiskers and things. Yeah, they're cat-like species. Wow. Which I actually channeled in 2016 before I took that picture. Gosh. So, 
And there's some sort of symbol on my back, um, E equals MC squared. We're into science, and although I'm a teacher, I don't really understand science, to be honest. Not quant- I go for quantum science. And what is when when people use quantum? I think of that as being incredibly small. What does quantum mean? Qu- quantum physics is like you can't really describe it. It's going to be different scenarios every time something happens. Um, so, it, sorry if you just go back to that picture. I'll uh, I'll just finish. Yeah, um, sure. So the symbol has been formed on the energy from the energy of the sun at the speed of light. A message to show I'm supported on my journey. Now that. And again, it's an undeniable symbol of something. Um, so yes, I mean that does. Look, I mean, as people can see, here's you, and there's your hands, mm. and this is your jacket on the back mm. of you, um, and then that's been somehow projected on, or is there? Yeah, that's on, in light. Yeah, it's in that's light. coming through in light, which is quite astounding, really, because you wouldn't be able to create that ordinarily, would no. you? No. Have you seen that symbol before? No, but I mean, it it takes me back to thinking and, you know, you have to be careful. You can jump down lots of different routes, but it's something to do with past life, I believe. It could be Native American or Liran. And then if you look at this one, if you just scroll up a little bit on there, just on the top of that picture. Yeah, yeah. just 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 where you were hovering. Just go to the left there. Go up a bit. No, there's faces all over it anyway. But right at the top of the picture, there's a little owl there. You're right on top of oh, it here. there. Yeah. Can you see the little owl in the oh, tree? Oh, yeah. Two little eyes here. Yeah. And then there's an owl below that. And then, as you say, there's lots of different... And that's a, that's, that's obviously a mirrored, mirrored picture. photo. Yeah. There wasn't two of me that day. No. <laughs> <laughs> Your twin is... Uh, yeah. uh, it could cause a lot of hassle <laughs> yeah. if you get a twin and then mirrored. Uh so this one's interesting um yeah there's lots of faces going up in the tree and then i i I don't actually know what those are those little silver and gold things are flying past but anyway i've put that down to unconditional love is the only magic we need and it is really we're we're in a phase where we need to operate from the highest vibration possible so this this one you saw didn't you yes do you remember this one yeah my tree that I worked with for five years. And when you photograph it more than yeah. once, does it change? Yes. Yeah. And the story behind this was I tried to get exactly the same picture. And then I realised that there was half the face in the tree. And I thought, oh, that's a bit naff. It's, it's there anyway. But then I was shown the face in light just as a validation. Mm that I was onto the right path with the photography. And yes, there's a definite face here, isn't there? Mm. Uh, like an old, wise looking, and then and, and yet you could see a, a bigger face here. Yeah, and have a look down the bottom, there's snakes where you, are, where you were, just where you were, if you go to the left. Yeah, there you go, there's a, that's a snake. Oh, right. In light. And that's very much associated with the green man. Canonus. So now we go to something much more recognisable. Yeah, Stonehenge. Stone, Stonehenge. So on the photo on the left, I can see half of a figure now on the last stone to the right. This one. Here. Yeah, I can make out half of that figure. And then when you mirror it, if you go to the photo on the right, here. that's what you get. So yes, you can see his head and his limbs and his legs. Wow. So, I mean, what do you think these are saying? Are they, are they, is that just as a result of what was carved into the stone? Or is it just light filling the, and light filling the crevices? Or is this just something that's being projected to you individually? To be honest, Richard, I'm not sure. I mean, I thought that it was about library books that I hadn't returned in a previous life to start with. <laughs> but I think it's more than that, you know. Um, it's a good question. Is it just for me, specifically for me? I would say no, because I do share them. Right, yes. You know? uh, and people... How do they? How are you received with these sort of fit pictures? I, when I first started, I put them on Facebook. And as I say, they, did, they, they were extremely popular. Extremely popular. Now, throughout my journey, I've been a bit naff with my promotion. 
not great. Um, a bit lazy, really, with platforms and things. I've got my own YouTube. and But um, on Facebook, they were going worldwide and people were coming back to me and saying, as, as I say, I see this, 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 this. But it's, it's about beauty as well. Yes. Um, you know, I wouldn't have said that Stonehenge image is particularly beautiful. It's powerful. It's a very, very powerful image you can see there. Um, but, you know, again, it's waking us up, isn't it? It's showing that there is something else around us. But removing the fear, or I hope that people wouldn't be in fear of that. Mm. I had to have that trickled to me over a few years. I took the picture and then I mirrored it a few years later. So what I've said there is unconditional love is the most powerful force in the universe, which it is. So, And unconditional love is light, and that's what I'm using. Right, yeah. Wow, look at uh, look at that. And so it's interesting, I mean, that filter that you're mm. using there, I mean, it's it's highlighted in 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 bringing in those colours mm. in that dramatic way over that whatever it is that I can't really see what's behind it, but clearly an uh, an a edifice, stone. a yeah. stone. Yeah. Um, is that uh, is that Stonehenge? That's Stonehenge. It's oh, yes, a mirrored it photo again. All oh, right. And and what you're getting with those colours is they they um, apply to the chakra colours if you know about the chakra colours. Oh right, in the same order. Yeah. So you've got the very earthy colours of, at the bottom, the the orange and the yellow. And um, yeah, and and those colours are on on that image is, yes is, and what i mean is yeah they're not anywhere else on the picture they're focused on the edifice of, of yes. the stone hen yeah you know so i mean obviously not... when you look around you can see the energy on the ground as well yes but, you know but that's the, the energy mm. coming from the stone is mm. quite incredible i mean there's a face in that top left one there in the top left top top left photo yeah there's a face can you see it in the middle here yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks like a spacecraft here. Yeah. Is that mirrored? That's a mirrored photo, yeah. And then you've got like a portal there with all the faces going up it. I mean, Stonehenge to me is a portal. Without 100% that is a portal. It's, it's um, it, I mean, it, it's going to get people thinking. And then you've got a deer or a wolf on that one on the right. Oh, wow, look at that there. And is that mirrored? These, all, these are all... Yeah, that's a mirror yeah. photo as well. So it's, it's sort of the mirror is revealing... What, what, would you... I mean, sometimes the mirrors are... Re, they're revealing something that's on the other side, aren't yes, they? That you yeah. can't see in this world. So yeah. would you say it's the same sort of thing? That it's, it, it, it is, and, you know... I, I haven't got to the bottom of it. I'm sure I will in my lifetime, um, in this lifetime, that I'll understand it completely. But I've been shown the importance of mirroring without a doubt. Um, so you've got Queen Yang there at Stonehenge, Chinese goddess of, of mercy. Gosh, look at that. Above. As above, so below. Yeah. So these are tree portals and I've done thousands of pictures. It's just like the TK Maxx of spiritual photos, I call it. Um, there's just so many. Right. Um, and when you say portal, this is something yeah. that often, um, I, you know, hear certain mm. things that this is a portal. And, and what does that mean? A portal to, to what? A, a secret tunnel that will, if you can get through it, you'll end up somewhere else? I think, again, it's to do with the light codes. It's to do with moving head to heart, if I'm honest. It's right. a portal of opportunity to remember who we are, maybe. Okay. Let's move on to uh, another one here. So that's Kingly Vale as well. I did a lot of Kingly Vale. It's obviously a very uh, special place for you. I mean, yeah. the, the, the one should explain, I suppose, that the, the trees there are several thousand. They're yew trees and they're mm. several thousand years old. Um, it is a very a special place. So this is interesting. This is Trayford. That's the place you've been, isn't it? Trayford Down. Yes. And I love 
I mean, I've, I've loved burial mounds, which sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? You know, but from an early age, I loved all those ancient sites. Sort of Bronze Age and, burial mounds. And connected to them. And, and this time I was up there flying the drone, early days of flying a drone, and it kept crashing, and I couldn't understand why. And then I managed to get some video off it, and then it just got deleted in front of me while I was standing there watching it. And at the time, there was somebody digging up the earth. Now... When I took that photo, I put it on Facebook, and somebody said, look, you've captured little little fairy beings there. And if you look at the picture on the right, you will yeah. see little, little, little beings in the grass there. Wow. So, I mean, we are, by default, um, pattern-seeking animals, that we mm -hmm. do see patterns in mm -hmm. pictures. It's not... I mean, you, when you say you, you can see these things... Mm. Is it that we are just imagining because we can sort of see shapes mm. and then sort of go, oh, that's obviously something, something, because we are familiar with it? Of or course, is it, yeah. Or is it mm. uh, more... I, I, well, I, I know. <laughs> I know I, 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 you know, for, from, from my journey, I, I work and I operate on intuition, so I would say differently. Pe people are going to look at it differently. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting to see the comments. Yeah, you? no, absolutely. Um, let's rattle through some of these others. That so that's got. Glastonbury. So that's the ley line on Glastonbury that you can see on the right-hand side there, the photo on the right-hand side. And you've got the tour at the top as well. Um, so that the, the, the tour picture is beauty. It represents the beauty of the place, really. When you're taking the pictures, are you mm. aware? Are you? Can you see the filter feedback on the screen? Can you see what you're saying, or is it? No, uh, it's afterwards. Is I would it? say it's afterwards. Yes. And uh, and, and again, that's trust, isn't it? It's yes. guidance and, and intuition. Absolutely. So that's Norton Church, and I was there on Sunday, um, which is a very very sacred site. That's a wishing tree at Norton Church um, at the solstice gathering. And Norton Church is down near Selsey, isn't it? And, uh, sorry, that's Norton. Oh, Norton. Norton is, Norton is a K, K. Oh, K. yes, I beg your pardon. Yeah, where that's, is, where that, is that's Norton? Dorset. Oh, uh, right, OK. Just into Dorset. So. Now, this is 360 photography now, and, and, and this one's very special to me. After my mum passed, I was feeling depressed. Mm. And I got, I got the guy, and it's got a little nudge. I call them little nudges to go out and do the photography where I really get a strong feeling of wanting to go and do it. Um, and that's high down and that's forget-me-nots, which is the um, symbol for Alzheimer's. Oh, right. Yeah. Be very so it beautiful. all tied in on the day. It tied in that, there you go, don't forget me, I'm still here, you know? Yes. So that's kind of like your mum talking to you. Yeah. It's, it's messages. It's messages through nat the nature vibration. So there are some of the uh, images of, of flower portals. Do you go and d display these in uh, public to to people? I mean, these are these look at these amazing pictures. I mean, I do go to spiritual fairs and I do sell them. I haven't found my right platform completely yet. If I'm honest, I am looking for talks. If anybody wants a talk, I'm I'm available. Um, I am looking at ways to get them just just distributed because they do need to be out there I feel because they show the beauty of the planet yeah and 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 that's something that we need to be reminded of because in the towns and cities a lot of that beauty has been taken mm. away we've seen the uglification of Britain mm. um, and of course other towns and places around the countryside mm. uh, around the world rather um, mm. so that's an, now that's an interesting uh, stone circle where is that that's on Hascombe Hill in Surrey. Oh. It's called the Dragonstone Circle. I think it's called the Dragonstone Circle. Um, but any, I've captured dragons there in the clouds and things. Just just lots of lots of things in the clouds there. Very very powerful land. It was Anglo-Saxon um, settlements there. And then there's some crop circles, which obviously having a drone. Yes. So it shows you what the crop circle looks like. It's great to be in a crop circle if you're respecting the land and, and the crop, obviously. Um, but having the drone really gives you that freedom to see the whole bigger picture. And do you put the filter on the drone? 
Ah, yeah. Uh, well, just recently, last couple of days, I've worked out a way how to do it. I did it a few years ago at Knowlton Church, the place I was talking about The filter before. sits in front of the lens, yeah, presumably. Yeah, so I'm, there's going to be a lot coming up with the drone and, and looking down at ley lines and, and energy signatures and imprints very soon. Fantastic. Lovely. So this is Boxgrove. And if you go to the left picture and go to the middle, can you see the green blob there? Here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I've actually witnessed that come down from somewhere else. Don't, I don't know where it came down from. And I was filming at the time when I, when I uh, saw it. And then it was another case of you're not meant to be showing that to people. And it was deleted off the camera again. Um, that, to me, shows that we are being supported with the energy. Now, look, we've got free will on this earth. It's up to us what we do. But we are being supported, you know, at the moment. Well, we have been since the shift of 2012, you know, we're, which we're well into now. And, actually, and, w and when you say we're being supported, we're being yeah. supported by, by what exactly? By, by the energy, the light that is hitting this planet. Mm. You know, we are we are getting. Why are they bothering? Line. I mean, I, I don't mean to be. Just, you know, they'd see this this primitive race who mm. are sort of at, at the moment, some of them a small number have enslaved the majority, and then are pretending that they got to shoot mm. and kill each other, which is uh, outrageous. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, we haven't learned, have we? We clearly have not. When I say we, mm. some of us haven't learned. You know. Yeah. Uh, I mean. And, and we still vote for these people mm, who take mm, our tax money and mm, then spend it on the murder of innocent men, women and children. Mm, I mean, you know, I, I talk about this a fair amount mm, uh, and yet people still acquiesce, pay their taxes and allow these voted in representatives to continually enslave us. I mean, it is bonkers. Yeah, and I think if you're awake, when you're awake and you see the unjust around us it's very difficult i call it sds shrek donkey syndrome have you seen the film shrek i've seen the original yeah the second one i think it is he's in a he's in, he's in a horse and cart and he's saying are we there yet are we there yet now it's very easy to think that this shift is going to happen over very quickly but it's not i do feel that i'm going to see it in my lifetime but a lot of systems have to collapse yeah, well, I hope. That I mean, they, there's too I, many I mean, to I do mention. Hope they happy, ha happen relatively quickly. Yes, agreed, definitely. So this is a, a message of unconditional love from above. Again, it's a green heart. There, you can see on the right hand side, it's it's manifestation of a green heart, which I've witnessed in front of me. And there it is again. And yeah, uh, that's Raphael. I believe that to be the angel archangel Raphael. Um, and Metatron's there as well. Very work very closely with both of them. Uh, Metatron's all about sacred geometry, which is obviously what my photos show. And love is the the one thing we're capable of perceiving that transcends dimensions of time and space. So that equation is unconditional love equals m c squared. Now, if you think about that, that's a powerful equation. Um, We'll come on to it later, but Einstein wrote a letter to his daughter about um, how you should change the equation to love and not energy. If you change that E mm. in E equals MC squared to love, I'm going one further and saying unconditional love because that's the highest level of love. It's, it's love without um, any expectation, basically. Yes. Yes. It's doing things for the right reason, you know, from the heart. Yes. It's not you're, you're loving your girlfriend and, mm. you know, all of that sort of, you know. Yeah, because it's difficult to quantify what love is, isn't it? It is. And, and, and I, you know, sometimes I have a problem with unconditional love because you're trying to sort of, well, define what you mean by love because love can have so many different uh, meanings you have love for your parent love mm. for your children love for your partner mm -hmm. um, you there's have, levels isn't there's there? levels and and then there's somebody trying to take your van away from the bailiffs mm. and it's very difficult to sort of love them you'd love them to leave you alone that's yes. the kind of love that i, I yeah. particularly will yeah I, I i completely understand i completely understand what you're saying 
Uh, now we're running out of time on mm -hmm. this, so we might have to sort of rush we'll through just, some just of go these. Through that bit. anyway. That's that letter, and it's worth looking at. It's uh, from Einstein wrote to his uh, daughter, just explaining about love and and changing that equation. Um, and you know, places like Knowlton Church, they're they're on energetic ley lines. Um, if we put that in attention into that energetic line. It's instantaneous. Wow. Instantaneous healing, basically. We are the beacons for unconditional love. Yeah, I believe so. You know, amongst other things. Amongst, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, th and this is Avebury, and I'm taking some people to Avebury on Beltane, uh, May the 4th, um, in the Beltane window, and I'm really looking forward to showing people the, the work with the filter there with Kate. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks very interesting. And then this back to the beginning, you know, I showed a picture of me and my late father at, at West Kennet. And then when you look, when I mirrored that photo, you've got faces all the way up. So I was connecting to something before I was taking the pictures. That's amazing. And I mirrored that photo 40 years later. Did you? So we're talking yeah. about timelines here as well. Oh, I see uh, what you mean. Yeah. Yes, you took the picture was yeah. taken, then you mirrored it much, yeah. much later on. So I'm offering VR, which is very, very immersive for my photography with the light codes and the colour. Um, and yeah, I've got oracle cards. I'd like to do a reading with you if that's OK. Yeah, Richard. of course. Let's, uh, but thank you for showing me the pictures. So that's OK. We've only got about uh, 10 minutes. That's OK. Is that's that fine. We can do that. So. What do we do? Are you good at shuffling cards? Because reasonably, I'm, I'm not. I created those, and I'm not. I shuffle them this way. Oh, there you go. Look at that, eh? It's like Tom Cruise at a cocktail. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. <laughs> but my dad used to do uh, magic tricks with cards. Ah, oh, there you go. And uh, I there used to go. do a little bit, but these are a bit bigger than ordinary cards. Yeah. But do you, do you want to pick three cards? Oh, this is the back, isn't it? Mm. Well, I'm just going to do a few more little manoeuvres. Right, three cards from anywhere. Yeah. I'll have that one, I'll have that one, and I'll have that one that's trying to hide. Okay, ha have a look at your cards, turn so them over one by one. Do you, can I show the, do you, do you need to see them? Or? Oh, risky, yeah, of course. Okay, right. So <laughs> I'll show the camera then, the three cards that I've got. Ah, um, wow, okay, so you've got some nice cards there, you've got, Cel God for that. <laughs> well, you've got some good ones. You know? <laughs> right, so I've got the Celtic Cross. Yeah, I'll tell you what the Celtic Cross is. Which is this one, I, if I hold this to the camera, it'll just, uh, which camera is it, it'll just be out of focus as it will be on that one, I'm sorry to say, because the camera's fixed. Yeah, I mean, these, these are all uh, photos with the energetic imprint in, using the filter, which are very, very powerful. That one is called Vule? Yule. Yule. Oh, yes, it's a Y. Yule, as in Yule Tide, presumably. Yes. And the Tree of Life. Yes. So yes. with any luck, this is, uh, this is, this is a good... Well, shall, shall I read you Celtic Cross? Yes, please. OK, discovery, experience, knowledge, compassion, strength and faith. And although the, the Celtic cross is widely considered a Christian symbol, it predates the birth of Christ. It did become widely used in Christian art and symbolism. Celtic cross is said to be a representation of knowledge, strength and compassion to manage life's upside, ups and downs. And I took that in Paul Brewer in 2020, that picture. Did you? Yes. Oh, amazing. Um, uh, I'm sorry you can't really see it in great detail, but... Uh so, so we've got Yule next. Yule next, which is a stag. By That's at Nep. Is it? Oh, at Nep. Yeah, yeah. and I, I wandered around. It was snow, and I thought, I want to. I manifested the picture. I went there, and I thought, I know exactly what I want. I want a deer in the snow. And it took me about two hours of trundling around Nep trying to find, get that picture. And eventually I got it before I went. So. Yeah, focus in, yeah. you get the idea yeah so what does that mean so that's hope trust and returning light so hope, if we trust and returning light yeah okay. if we think about yule it's a celtic festival and it's around the the, the winter solstice where the light yes. starts to come back obviously this can be applied at any stage in your life it's not just we have to wait until the new year no or winter solstice and then the final one is the tree of life yeah 
So that's strength, durability, protection, knowledge, experience, and wisdom. Yeah, you've got a lot of experience and wisdom. Oh, well, there today. we go. That's all right. <laughs> I, hope, I hope that actually means something. Yeah, definitely. And that people go, oh, yes, that vogues. He's got, he's got none of that wisdom. Oh, cards don't lie. Well, they don't you know. lie. So, yeah. So go. it's a representation of the link between heaven and earth. Oh, well, there we are. You see, I'm a link for the viewer mm. um, to link up between heaven yeah. and, and earth. So that's it, yeah. Mind, body, says. and never-ending cycle of life. The Celts believed the tree of life was a symbol of longevity, wisdom, and strength. And they believed that, that the trees were actual ancestors of man and provided a gateway wow. to the spirit world. And that's what I've shown in my photography as well. So in my experience, I can agree with the statement. I believe trees are portals to different realms. There you go. That is, uh, that is amazing. And do, these cards and your thing, you're selling these? Yes, they're, they're available. My um, email's on, on, the, uh, on one of those slides, which will be on the video. I'll take that and we can put it in the description. Thank you. Thank yeah. you do you Richard. have a web page? I don't. You see, this is, this is the sorting out the platform. Yes, uh, it's it's been an ongoing thing. I'm good at taking the photos, not so good at getting it out there. I know at the what moment. You, mean. you can't. But the, the thing is, you can't be good at everything. <clears throat> no. And in these days, you know, the, we're all being pushed to be solo mm. individuals, ghettoized, you know, away yeah. from everything, and, and we need to adapt. I mean, ideally, mm. we need a community where everybody helps each other. But at the moment, that's coming. Yeah. No, that's I coming. I agree with you, but. When it comes to sort of technology and then artistry, sometimes the two don't go together no. in trying to build a platform and stuff. I spoke to a woman yesterday who is desperately trying to help people, but she's hadn't a clue how to put a web page together and all of these things. I've got the te technical skills. It's the self-promotion, and I think my journey's been about self-belief in myself as well, which I am starting to get more confidence with. You know. Good for you. Um, well, we'll put the uh, email in the you. description thank you. and people can contact you and find out more about A, the photography, where mm. you get the filter from. The little from, filter, yeah. Um, and uh, your your cards. And um, and do you have a Facebook page as well? I that, do have my Facebook, yeah, yeah. I can give you that as well. Yeah. So we'll people that. can drop in. I mean, I've got some exciting things happening this year, so... Anything you want to reveal in the last well, few seconds? Well, with the drone and, you know, going to Avebury and there's there's other stuff and, and, and other talks and things. So um, it's exciting. It's an exciting time to be alive, although that we've got ev all the chaos around us. You mm. know, we're, we're here to calm the storm, I think. Yes. Well, I've, I've said before that I think as more and more people begin to become aware of the great mm. harms that have been perpetrated, those that have already been aware or awake, as people mm. do use that phrase, will be the signposts and yeah. will be there to help the others Let's come in. Yeah. yeah, because there'll probably be a bit of a rush and they'll need to know where to do, what to do, how to go. And, and, and we lot are thinking about it, at least trying to. Well, we, we, we are and we're manifesting, aren't we? Subconsciously, yeah. even if it's subconsciously, we're, we're, we're always manifesting. If we work from the, the, the heart, that's the best intention, isn't it? You've got a picture there in your yes. in your hand yeah, before we you go. go. Just, uh, Just the, the hope frequency, that one. If so. you can yeah, there we go. Look at that. Beautiful. That's the hope frequency. Um, where was that? That, that was taken at, believe it or not, King Lee Vale, I think. Wow. Um, but I've been experimenting with mirroring and turning it into a When you a look circle at the, the pictures, do you get, as, as an individual, do you get vibrations from it? Do you get yes. energy from it? it, it, so it they hold energetic imprint, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, John, thank you so much for no problem. joining me today. Thank you for uh, having me over, Richard. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's getting a bit chilly in this studio. It is get, it's getting cold, isn't it? Have we got spirit around? Or? <laughs> no, no, it's just there's no heating in my house. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. For those that don't know, this is actually in the old master bedroom, this house of a two up, two down Victorian house with no heating in it. So it does, uh, I put a space heater on in the, at the beginning. And then as that hour goes, it, can it, just, get, it gets cold. Well, I was at Knowlton Church on Sunday, so I can take the cold. People call me an ash tree. Oh, an, an ash tree. Yes. Yeah, like. I'm, out, I'm up at Glastonbury, tour in my T-shirt, you know. Brilliant stuff. So that's sunset, sunrise. <laughs> well, thank you for coming in thank and sharing this stuff. Thank you very much. Um, it's been absolutely delightful. I will be back with uh, more monologues and more interviews in due course. Of course, keep checking the channel. 
check out uh, the links below and get in touch with John if you want to um, find out more about what he's up to and the photography and of course look at the Facebook page but in the meantime from uh, John and myself thank you so much for watching and until next time from thank us, you bye goodbye <laughs>